The dark sand dune seen in the middle distance here were the first in place study of an active sand dune anywhere other than Earth by a Mars rover. The dunes are part of a band of dunes called Bagnol Dunes along the northwestern edge of Mount Sharp. The dune field is evident as a dark band in orbital images of the area inside Gale Crater, where Curiosity has been active since landing in 2012. Dunes here are larger than windblown ripples of sand or dust that Curiosity and other rovers have visited previously. One dune that Curiosity investigated is as tall as a two-story building and as broad as a football field. Ripples on the surface of these Martian dunes are also larger than ripples on the surfaces of sand dunes on Earth. In the winter, a layer of carbon dioxide ice covers the north polar sand dunes on Mars. In the spring, the sublimation of the ice going directly from ice to gas causes a host of uniquely Martian phenomena. In this image, streaks of dark basaltic sand have been carried from below the ice layer to form fan-shaped deposits on top of the seasonal ice. The similarity in the directions of the fans suggests that they formed at the same time when the wind direction and speed was the same. The fans often form along the boundary between the dune and the surface below the dunes.
This view shows NASA's Mars Phoenix lander. The black circle on the spacecraft is where the camera itself was mounted on the lander and was out of view in the images taken by the camera. The height of the lander's meteorology mast extending appears exaggerated because the mast is taller than the camera mast. The ground surface around the lander has polygonal patterning similar to patterns in permafrost areas on Earth. Discovery of these yellow crystals of elemental sulfur marks the first time this mineral has ever been found in a pure form on Mars. This collection of fragments is about 5 inches across from left to right. The crystals were found after Curiosity drove over and crossed the rock, and the composition of the rock was later determined by the rover using its alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. Scientists have seen many kinds of sulfur on Mars. The region where Curiosity found this rock is in fact known for being rich in sulfates, a kind of sulfur-based salt that was left behind as water dried up on this part of the planet billions of years ago. It isn't clear, however, what relationship, if any, the elemental sulfur has to other sulfur-based minerals in the area. Elemental sulfur consists only of pure sulfur atoms, unlike the sulfur bound to oxygen in sulfate. It's an odorless mineral that on Earth is created by a variety of different geological processes, including volcanic and hydrothermal activity. Scientists don't yet know which processes would have formed the elemental sulfur found by the rover, but they're searching for clues in the rocks and surrounding area. In this amazing panorama, multiple sandstone beds can be seen in the foreground, which show systematic inclination to the south, suggesting progressive build-out of the sediments toward Mount Sharp. At this location, which is about a mile north of the base of the mountain, these inclined beds can be traced up to about 100 yards in the direction of the build-out. These inclined beds are interpreted as small deltas building out into a shallow lake. As sediment-laden river water encountered a standing body of water, the river current was forced to abruptly decelerate, leading to rapid deposition of sediment at the river mouth. This deposition led to formation of a delta and the continued supply of sediment by rivers flowing from the crater rim led to deltas building out into the lake towards the south.
The two mesas in this view are about 260 feet apart. The top of the one on the left is about 26 feet above the surrounding plain and about 330 feet from Curiosity's position when the rover acquired this image. The mesa on the right is about 33 feet high and the top of it is about 270 feet from the rover. The upper part of Mount Sharp is seen in the horizon between the two prominent mesas. This view shows a cone on the side of a giant shield volcano. The cone is 2300 by 3600 feet in size, similar to many cinder cones found on Earth. The cone shows some layers of hard rock, but most of it is made of relatively soft material. This appears to be an example of a cinder cone composed of pieces of lava thrown into the air during a small volcanic eruption. Typically such eruptions produce fountains of molten lava, most of which would have cooled in this fountain, producing a loose pile of lava rocks. However, it appears that some pulses of the eruption 
allowed the lava to land without much cooling here. Those pieces were hot enough to weld together to make the hard layers we see today. In other parts of the image, we can also see channels carved by lava. This panorama taken by Curiosity rover shows an area where a lower and older geological unit of mudstone, the pale zone in the center of the image, lies in contact with an overlying geological unit of sandstone. Just before Curiosity reached the area, the rover's laser firing, chemistry and camera instrument examined a rock found to be rich in silica a mineral-forming chemical.